What is going to be the next hot thing in crypto that can grow by 1000x? That can be the number one top opportunity to carry this technology to mass adoption. Well, what if it's already right here and it's actually standing right in front of our noses? And while everyone else is off chasing the next 100x altcoin, they've completely missed this. Well, I'm going to talk about this number one use case for blockchain technology that's been growing behind the scenes and is primed for exponential explosion. So trust me, you don't want to miss this. I'm going to explain everything in this video today as a blockchain developer myself who works with this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here... Hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something you're interested in, then smash that like button down below and subscribe. And if you want to see how to take advantage of all the insane opportunity that's happening in blockchain right now, I can show you how to increase your income by becoming a blockchain developer over at dappadiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's get into this. Let's talk about this next massive crypto use case that's prime for exponential growth that's already here and has been growing behind the scenes right under our noses. So what is it? Well, it's stable coins. So wait, what? Now, before you just exit out of the video, hear me out, because I bet that you, like a lot of other people, are missing this. Because stable coins have seen a massive boom in crypto, and nobody's really paying attention. We've seen lots of recent developments to support this, like Circle, uh, the company behind the one of the world's largest stable coins, USDC, just did their IPO a few days ago, and it's 3x in valuation since its launch. So that's what the market thinks about this. And to back that up, some of the world's largest payment giants have also recently introduced stable coin products like Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, and Stripe. So more on that in a minute. So why is that? Because I know like stable coins are a pretty boring crypto use case. It's just a coin whose price doesn't change, all right? Or said a different way, a coin that's pegged to the US dollar or some other fiat currency. And all you can really do with it is spend it or send it around, maybe lend it out on a protocol. So what's the big deal? Well, the data doesn't lie. This is seeing massive adoption of crypto. And it's a use case for crypto that's getting tons of traction that has nothing to do with financial speculation and is actually growing independent of what's happening with crypto prices. So let's take a look at some data that's published by A16Z that highlights some of this growth because you can't ignore this. So basically, stablecoins now present the first credible opportunity to onboard a billion people into crypto, billion with a B, because they're rivaling the world's largest payment networks, okay? So this blue right here is stablecoins. Okay, $33 trillion is processing more volume in the last 12 months than Visa. Okay, stable coins are producing more volume than Visa by about 3x. Okay, and on orders of magnitude larger than PayPal and over a third the volume of all the ACH transfers out there. Not to mention the fact that stable coins have now reached an all time high supply and represent 1% of the entire US dollar supply. Okay. That's absolutely insane. So all the US dollars in existence, 1% of them have now been tokenized into stablecoins. Now, that might sound like a small number, but it's an astronomically large number. Like if you said that 1% of all the US dollars in existence were sitting inside of something like Venmo or PayPal, that, that would be insane. But that's what's happening with stablecoins. And I expect this number to grow over time. But one of the biggest points about this, and I alluded to this a second ago, is that the stablecoin activity is actually uncorrelated with crypto trading volume. All right. So what can you infer from that data? Well, it's really important. Basically, it's a reason that people are demanding blockchain technology and cryptocurrencies that has nothing to do with financial speculation. OK, so in the past, we've seen things like, you know, stablecoin activity increase during crypto bull runs because people want to use stablecoins to speculate on digital assets. All right. But we're actually seeing stablecoin activity increase. All right. Right here while crypto trading volume is declining. Now you might say, well, that's because people are moving back into stable coins while they're selling the market, but that doesn't tell the whole story, all right? This actually trend continues and is completely uncorrelated with what's happening with the trading volume, whether it's going up or down. And so why is that? Well, it's because stable coins, in my view, have really come to see product market fit. And so when you're talking about new technology, you have to create the product and then find out, you know, how it's actually going to work in the marketplace. And then whenever that happens, that's when you can achieve exponential growth. And that step has clearly happened with stablecoins, and we're seeing this trend go up and to the right. So how are these stablecoins being adopted? Well, they're the number one killer use case for crypto so far, besides financial speculation, for a couple different reasons. Number one is going to be with payments, and number two is going to be with, you know, just sending money around. 
So let's start with payments. Let's see why stable coins are an inevitability. So there's an old Charlie Munger quote that says, you know, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome. And that's exactly what you can do here with stable coins. So I'm gonna reference another graphic here put out by H16Z. Obviously they did all the hard work and the research for this video, so full credit to them. But take a look at the incentives here and try to forecast where this is gonna go. So stable coins, adopting them as a payment method is a win for consumers and it's a win for merchants, and it's a win for payment processors. So how is that? Well, let's look at some examples here. So basically, let's say that you buy a $100 purchase, okay? Let's say you go shopping for some clothes, you pay $100 at checkout, all right? Well, the merchant in this case, let's say you're buying them from, I don't know, let's just say you bought some shoes at Nike. I'm just gonna make something up here. So at the Nike store, if you were to pay with a credit card, all right, you're gonna pay $100. It's gonna go out of your account. But the merchant, Nike, all right, is going to pay $3.20 of that transaction, so 3.2% to the credit card company, basically. Now, at the point of sale, let's say at the Nike store, they're using something like Square or another one of those little like iPad apps where you swipe your card and they turn it around and you sign with your finger, okay? That's the payment processor. So they have to have some sort of fee in order to accept the credit cards. So they are going to only get 25 cents from your $100 purchase. All right, that's what the current model with credit cards. Now, let's move that over to stable coins. All right, so if you do that same $100 purchase and you pay with $100, then the merchant's only gonna have to pay $1.50 and the payment process is going to net $1.09. So said a different way, it's over 50% cheaper for the merchants and the payment processor makes over three times as much money. So it's a win-win. And so those are the types of incentives that make stable coin adoption very attractive for businesses. And so going back to that a second ago, show me the incentives and I'll show you the outcome. Well, if you can use stable coins to make payments cheaper for businesses to accept, then that's a recipe for explosive adoption. And that's a huge reason I think that nobody's watching this. Now, another point that I wanna make about this is, you know, I've been in crypto for years now, all right? And I've watched this technology slowly mature from really clunky to getting a lot better in the format you see today. And, you know, we're looking at an example of how technological innovation can actually unlock new levels of adoption because we've had stable coins for a very long time, but they haven't really clicked, honestly, until recently for people outside of crypto. So why is that? Well, we've made blockchains faster and cheaper to use. So now you can send a stable coin on a network like Solana or an Ethereum layer two for less than one cent and it's going to settle in less than one second. That's insanely fast, that's insanely cheap. That's much faster than pretty much any other way if you wanna send money around the world. Not to mention the fact if you're talking about business to business payments, so if you're sending large amounts of money from one business to another, which happens all the time behind the scenes, you may not relate to this if you've never been inside of a business really before or seen what happens behind the scenes or run one yourself, but there's a lot of times where you have to send large amounts of money to people, like tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, depending on what type of business you run. And those can be very costly, okay? They can take three to seven days to settle, and they can cost anywhere between $14 and $150 per $1,000 that you're sending. But stable coins can erase all that and make nearly instant settlement that's basically free. Because it doesn't matter if you're sending $1 or you're sending a million dollars, you can still do it for less than a cent. And if you look at the other times of settling, like credit card payments are basically instant to merchant, debits are basically an instant merchant, but ACH transfers are three to five business days. International wires are one to five business days. Remittances are minutes to days. Other peer-to-peer -peer payment apps can take up to one day, but stable coins are seconds to minutes. And so that's a big overview of, you know, how stable coins are exploding behind the scenes in a way that I think a lot of people other aren't paying attention to and like what the incentives are for this to get adopted in the future. So where can this go from here? Well, in my view, this trend that I'm talking about really is primed for exponential growth. And I think we could see stable coins accepted pretty much anywhere where you have a point of sale system in the pretty near future, to tell you the truth. Like anywhere where you could swipe a credit card, like they'll probably accept stable coins in the not too distant future. And so if you're watching this video and you've been watching this channel and you're a developer or an aspiring developer, then that's really good news for you because that means the demand for this technology is going to accelerate through the roof. Just like everybody and their brother 
owner inside of a business is trying to integrate AI into their business some way, well, if you're a business and you accept money, you're going to be scrambling to figure out how to integrate stablecoin payments in some form or fashion. And that's a massive trend that can continue whether crypto goes up, down, sideways. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a bull market or a bear market. They can be demand for crypto 365 days per year, every year. And that's great news for blockchain developers. So if that's something that you're interested in, then make sure you smash that like button down below, subscribe to this channel. And if you want to get started today, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those videos and you went to the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can try to become a blockchain master step-by-step step to start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get it started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.